Kira. Ian Lees Galloway. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today is certainly a day to celebrate, and like others have done, I want to acknowledge Christine Bartlett. I want to acknowledge the leadership of the unions who were involved in this, ETU, uh, their precursor union, the Service and Food Workers Union, the New Zealand Nurses Organisation, the Public Service Association and the Council of Trade Unions, and the entire union movement that threw their weight behind this campaign, which has been going on for a number of years. In particular, I want to acknowledge the thousands of unionised care and support workers who have held the line year after year after year and stuck to this campaign. Before I came into Parliament, I had the privilege of working for the nurses' organisation, and my first job for them was as an organiser. And I met, and it was a real privilege to do so, hundreds of care and support workers who were trying to build this movement within their industry amongst their co-workers. And it can be a real challenge to convince people who are already on incredibly low wages to pay that union fee in the hope that one day the campaign will be successful. And for th thousands of people, that was too much of a challenge, but so many of them did. They stayed in, they stayed part of the union, and now that they've got the win, now they've got the victory, they're sharing it with everybody. That is a wonderful thing to do, and they should be congratulated and acknowledged for doing it. Because people have talked about the 20 months of negotiation, and they've talked about the five years of court battles, but no one has yet mentioned the years and years and years and years of campaigning that went on and the struggle that has gone on. So I want to say to those who did stay in the movement, who stayed firm, who held the line, congratulations, the day has finally come. And it's not long now before the money will be in your bank account. And I know that that's not what it's all about. It is actually about recognition. Because the other thing I discovered when I met these um, incredible, mostly women, incredible people, predominantly women of course, was their commitment and dedication to what they did and the people that they care for. It is not a job that I think most people in this house could do. It's an incredibly intimate job. It is caring for another human being, providing incredibly intimate services and it takes a certain disposition, it takes an incredible amount of empathy, it takes love and it takes dedication. And for too long, we relied on that love and dedication to keep people in the profession, even though they could earn more pulling veggies out of the ground or stacking shelves or even looking after animals at the city pound. All those jobs paid more than being a care and support worker. And yet women carried on doing what they did because of their commitment to the people that they cared for. So today, and this settlement, is not just about the money. It is, out of, it is about acknowledging what a tremendous job that is that they do and how we lost we would be as a society if we did not have those wonderful care and support workers doing the job that they do. It's also uh, an acknowledgement that we're finally recognising the place of our elderly. Because I always found it, um, uh, well, I thought it, was, I thought it was poor form that we um, considered caring for our elder people uh, such a, um, a low priority that we paid nearly or the minimum wage or barely more than that to the people who were responsible for caring for them. So it's not just an acknowledgement of the workers themselves, it's an acknowledgement of the elderly people. We've heard a lot about the package, $2 billion. We've heard a lot about what it's going to happen on, aver what's going to, happen on average to, to people. I just want to share one story about one worker who's going to be affected by this. Her name is Amor Tate. She's from Palmerston North. She works in home support, so she's one of the people who goes into people's homes to care for them in their own home. Again, a, a credibly intimate relationship she has with her clients. She's been a home support worker for 20 years, and because she wants to provide the very best care, 
She has become qualified. She has a level three qualification. Despite two decades of experience and despite being qualified in, in her role, she currently earns $16.22, barely above the minimum wage. And as a result of this settlement, her hourly rate will rise to $21 an hour. Finally, some decent recognition of her experience, of her qualification and her commitment to the people that she cares for. Amor says this, it'll just make things so much easier. You can do so much more. You can buy more things, have a social life. It'll all go back into the economy, she says, and she's absolutely right. One of the, most, one of the best things we can do to stimulate our economy is actually to put more money in the back pockets of low-income workers. And you can save a bit. It'll just ease things right across the board. It's as simple as that. It's about giving people real freedom, real choices. So I want to congratulate all those workers and the movement for getting to this position. And look, I want to congratulate the government for getting around the table. I want to say this gently, but honestly, they got around the table because if they didn't, uh, then the court settlement was actually going to result in, in a much greater, uh, much more expensive exercise for the government. Good on the unions, good on the workers for being prepared actually to give up on back pay claims and to come to a settlement that the government was prepared to pay out on because if they were stuck with a court decision, it would have cost an awful lot more. But again, this is the practicality of, of the unionised uh, workforce is that they are actually prepared to get around the table and do what is right, do what is in the national interest as well as in their own interest. And I want to say this, that I think the model of workers, employers and the government getting around the table and saying, we have a real problem in this industry, wages are not high enough, conditions are not good enough, we're struggling to retain and attract workers, uh, we're not um, actually recognising the role of those workers properly. That is an incredibly good model. I want to acknowledge that in the way the government, I think, has set a wonderful precedent here. This, was a, this is an industry-level agreement that sets minimum standards right across the care and support industry, regardless of whether workers are unionised or not. Minimum standards that any employer, in this case tendering to DHBs to use public money to provide a service, they have to meet these minimum standards of pay and conditions for their workforce. They can't undercut each other on those standards. And I think that is a brilliant precedent. And I want to congratulate the National Party for bringing that precedent forward, for working with that precedent, that tripartite approach. Employers, workers and the government working together to get good conditions and good outcomes for working people. And I say to the government, don't make this the end. Don't cut off the future pay equity settlements. And I know that's not part of this bill, but there is another piece of legislation and we are going to have to negotiate a little bit in this House about what the future holds. But not just for pay equity settlements and equal pay, but actually for other industries where people are low paid, other industries where workers are vulnerable. This is an incredibly good model. The idea of having an industry standard agreement that is negotiated and, and sets standards for everybody working in that industry. Wonderful idea. We really like it on this side of the House and we're really pleased that the National Party is on board with that concept as well. So, sir, I want to say... <laughs> I want to say congratulations to everybody involved in this. This is a good settlement. This is a victory for working people. And it has been incredibly hard fought. And it just demonstrates that when working people work together, when they organise under the banner of unions, then the victory does come. It sometimes seems a very long way off. And 12 years ago when I was an organiser, it did seem a long way off. But victory does come when we work together. Let's continue this legislation in that spirit. 
Let's work together to get this bill passed as quickly as possible and get that money in the pockets of those care and support workers. I call with Simon O'Connor. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Look, very pleased to take a call on this care and